G'day, David. What a thrill it is to be chatting with you today. How are you, sir? I'm really fine. I mean, it's like the temperature is like about 74 degrees. It's just... Uh, it's good. I yeah, it's, I have my, my own little forest here, yeah. Yeah, no, where I am, it's, um, you know, you got to you got to couple, cover these little babies. Yeah. <laughs> um, look, talking to you is like, I guess, having a reunion with a favorite teacher from high school because so much of my youth was spent at the school of Zucker, Abrams and Proft. Um, so thank you, sir. It's my pleasure. Sure. I appreciate it. I would be extremely disappointed if any of our listeners were not aware of your work, and we do talk about them on the show, but just to add some context to our conversation, some of your films are Airplane, Naked Gun, Top Secret, Basketball, amongst so many more. But as an Aussie, I have one question I'm really curious to know, is that how did you feel about the Australian title for Airplane upon release? It was called Flying High down here. Well... You know, this was because Universal uh, didn't thought that it would be confused with their airport movies. So, and they gave us a lot of trouble about a lot, a bunch of things. So, he they didn't want us to call it airplane at all. And the compromise was it would be airplane in North America, and then other things, all kinds of titles everywhere else. And so, yeah, UK uh, was uh, flying high. Yeah. Same here. And it took, I guess it took at least a decade or two for people to realize down here that it was actually called Airplane. <laughs> a lot of people had no idea. So even now, Flying High is the title people recognize. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's strange. It's strange. <laughs> but, um, but you and those, those aforementioned legends before your brother and, um, and um, well, I've lost my train of thought, and, um, and Jim Abrams, Abrams and Jim Abrams, um, you essentially created an entire genre of comedy. And I guess in some ways you could say that you sort of picked up the torch from Mel Brooks and Carl Reiner, but there's something very unique about the way you delivered it. Um, what do you think defines the, the Zucker brand? Well, I think the change was also, uh, was almost akin to, um, you know, whatever happened before rock and roll. I mean, there was Sinatra and there was, I mean, it was like a whole thing. Like my parents didn't understand rock and roll at all but you know there was that generational change and uh what we did was took the comedians out of out of comedy and it was also uh the reason why it was so hard to get it uh financed i mean we we wrote the original script to airplane in 1975 and you know, as you know i mean it wasn't released until 1980 so uh, uh, there were a lot of good things about that circumstances also because, you know, we were able to do Kentucky Fried Movie in between after we wrote Airplane. And so we re really learned a lot about directing uh, by working with John Landis. For sure. Um, that That is a particular favourite of mine. I think that's up in the top top three, perhaps, of my favourite films of yours, without a doubt. It, was, nice. there a point, was there a point in time where you recognised that you were on a winning formula? Oh, you know, <laughs> it's, a, it's a good question. I mean, we were, we started in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Madison, Wisconsin, and we developed our own brand of humor even back then. This was in 1971. And so uh, the reaction, we had a small theater called Kentucky Fried Theater, which of course became Kentucky Fried Movie. But Back then, uh, we were getting a huge reaction. I mean, audiences just went nuts. They had never seen this kind of humor before. And we knew we had hit on something. And one of the guys in the group and I went out to LA to scout out um, locations for theaters. And when we were out, out here in LA, then <clears throat> we, we saw some of the, the biggest uh, sketch comedy groups there were, like the committee and the pitchel players. And, you know, these were big groups and uh, uh, a second city. And we were just blown away by, I mean, not by them so much by, but by, we thought, oh my God, we have machine guns in the civil war. <laughs> and, and we, we knew, uh, so in answer to your question, I mean, we knew we had it then. And then, mm. so, and we started the theater in LA and it was huge. That again, it's very successful because people had never seen anything like it. We were, we did 
non-political humor. We were just being silly. We were we thought uh, media and popular culture was more important than politics. And you know, the 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 groups at the time were doing Nixon jokes, and we just we thought how lame. And, and so we evolved our own style. And then when we saw this movie called Zero Hour, are you familiar with that? Yep. So that is the model, that was the model for Airplane. And that's when the idea occurred to us that, oh, we could, we could remake this movie with serious characters, dispense with comedians and just do it that way. That was the big breakthrough, I think. So Definitely. Uh, that, we absolutely, and, and then I also get asked the questions a lot, uh, were you surprised by the success of Airplane? Because, you know, we came out of nowhere. And then <laughs> suddenly in 1980, we're on the cover of People and every, everywhere. It was the biggest hit of the summer. Uh, and, and, and so, and we said, actually not, we weren't surprised. You know, without, you know, trying to be too arrogant about it, you know, we had been, you know, we had this experience of having done the uh, live theater and, and we just were very self-confident. And we had also been telling every studio and every production company, this is going to be a big hit. And of course, getting turned down everywhere. Uh, but so when it actually was a big hit, we weren't surprised because, I mean, we really did believe this would be a, a, a big hit. Yeah. Lesson to be learned. Back yourself in everything you do, for sure. Yeah, we <laughs> certainly were, were confident. And, you know, we were, we were very headstrong. Uh, and people would ask us, you know, when we loaded up a U-Haul truck and went from, you know, the Midwest to LA, the big city. <clears throat> and they said, what was your plan B uh, if, if you failed? And, and, you know, I was al always make a lame joke, like, well, I always had my, my dad's mattress business to fall back on. But, uh, <laughs> but, but uh, really we had no plan B. We absolutely, you know, believed a hundred percent that it would work. So For sure. we were pretty helpful. And so much of that story with Airplane is all about pushing boundaries as well. And Mel Brooks once famously said that um, terrible things, he, you know, it's his job to make terrible things entertaining. Were there ever any no-go zones for you guys with your comedy? Well, you know, there's always a no-go zone. I don't think we're ever mean-spirited or, you know, racist or, you know, anything bad. Mm. But we do push boundaries and make just, you know, we make fun of anything that is taken seriously. Yeah, sure. And so I think one of the big things we pointed out was that movies are bad. You know, movies are complete bullshit. And, and you know, and you're being asked to believe this serious stuff in all the airport movies. And that was just one genre that we picked. Yeah. But, you know, later we picked the, <clears throat> the police genre. You know, so we, we spoofed Clint Eastwood and Dirty Harry. And uh, Pat Proft and I just wrote a script uh, called Counterintelligence spelled with a J, which is a spoof of the uh, international spy thriller genre, Born, Bond, uh, Mission Impossible. Oh, fantastic. So, That's yeah. exciting. Is there, a, is there a film of yours that you are most proud of and one that you think is your best? One that I think what? The, and one that you think is possibly your best. Oh, well, I think the, the, the one I'm most proud of and, and the best it still is Airplane <clears throat> because it was an unbelievable experience. You know, we were just, we were really three regular guys from the Midwest and suddenly we're, we got the biggest hit movie in, in the country and, and coming out of, you can only come from nowhere once mm. and you can only make that splash once. I remember my parents held a screening, a it was really the world premiere of Airplane. It was a week before it actually opened to the public uh, at the Fox Bay Theater, which was our local theater in Milwaukee, which we used to go to to see Three Stooges. And, and here was our movie playing for, uh, uh, you know, our parents uh, invited just the, you know, the immediate city, you know, to this thing. <laughs> and uh, it was, uh, and that was amazing. And so it got a great reaction. Um, and and you, you can only do that once. I mean, we had other movies, you know, we went back and they, we did, uh, you know, top secret screening and naked gun. Um, but it was never this, it was never the same. It was quite as big as airplane. 
Yeah, so for sure. I, I know that I know that I'll never have an experience like that again. And but and also, you know, that's okay. I mean, I, I don't, you know, you can also ruin your life by trying to top something constantly. Yeah, trying but, to chase that feeling, yeah. Yeah, you can't chase it. And, and I've had uh, other successes and failures since then. And, uh, you know, uh, otherwise, I mean, my life is, is pretty good. You know, I got married, I had two great kids and, you know, th- things. But so I don't depend on, you know, having a big hit Mm. Uh, to validate me or or make me happy for sure for sure and speaking of um speaking of greatness i I would like to to ask do you think that the isle of lucy joke is your best joke because i do ever yeah that is the one of the (laughs) (laughs) you know i can i i think over you know there was another joke in in kentucky (laughs) movie that was i mean there's so many great jokes in kentucky fried movie i may not (laughs) recommend it as the greatest movie ever to to watch all the way through because it's hit and miss but you know what i lo- love about the kentucky fried movie is that 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 one run we have uh who are they is they're lost drunken men uh who don't know who they are and no longer care <laughs> and then and, and the bruce lee guy says and who are these? These are lost drunken men who don't know who they are, but do care. <laughs> and these are men who know who they are and care, but don't drink. <laughs> so it's like, I love that. So we always would, would do these runs. And that was one of our first uh, who's on first yeah. routines. Yeah. And that is sort of and mirrored with, one, the, yeah. with the sight gag of the, um, the room that's bugged. With all the microphones, like it sort of flows on with oh, that as well. That's right. There's so many great things and uh, uh, danger seekers. I mean, you know, a lot of these things we couldn't do today. Yeah. Well, no, that's the thing, we... isn't it? I was, I was going to ask you on that note: is that you know, over the years, so many people have picked up the torch and, and run with it, and almost flogged the spoof genre to death. Do you think there's room for parody movies now? Uh, absolutely. I mean, you need a good subject. Uh, but you know the studio heads are so frightened, or the committees that they give it to, that you know they don't want to do anything. That's you know, you know, I mean, Pat, Pat Proft and I have written a great script, the counterintelligence, and it's funny without. I don't think it touches any nerves mm. because spoof is not about uh, current pop culture. It's and it's not a rom-com. It's just, it's a spoof of a certain genre. Uh, so we don't, I don't think we can be accused of the sexism, racism, the, you know, all the isms yeah. that are going on in the cancel culture. But yeah. you never know. I mean, I think the studios are so frightened to do anything that, uh, mm. you know, there's no good comedy now. Yeah, well, do you think uh, that's something that, you know, independently could, you know, could be much more powerful? Um, well, we're working on getting, trying to get financing for counterintelligence. And I also have a, a script, it's a film noir comedy right. and again, right. it's, you know, dead serious, like those film noirs were. And, and it's, it's, uh, it's such a great script, but you know, studios will be frightened of anything of, yeah. you know, oh, you can't do a black and white movie, but you know, they did the artist and I think it won the Oscar. <laughs> and a bunch of Oscars. So even though, you know, uh, my company is an Oscar free company, we don't, you know, we don't, we don't get anything like that. <laughs> Your accolades come to you in different ways. So yes. uh, before I, before I let you run, um, I just want to touch on one thing. And many years ago, I heard you discussing airplane as a side note on a commentary track. And I think it was the Kentucky fried movie. And you said that, after all those years, you could never bring yourself to watch Airplane 2. And I'm wondering that, you know, since you yourself have sort of um, sort of dived into pre-established series like Scary Movie, has curiosity got the better of you with that one? Never. I, have, I don't see any bad movie. So <laughs> I, I, I won't go to a theater to see a bad movie. And so I have no curiosity, no desire to see... Airplane too, and in fact, it's it's actually worse than that. It's I don't want to see it because I, you can't unsee that stuff. Yeah, you right. know, uh, you know, my son the other day was showing me this uh, 
this thing with uh, Je uh, uh, some comedian doing a thing about uh, the Jeffrey Tubin, the guy that was uh, uh, caught masturbating on a Zoom call. Yeah. Uh, so and I and then they had him his first day back on CNN. And my son thought it was amusing, but I couldn't watch it. I just, you know, I didn't want to see this. Just like so icky, you, you can't <laughs> unsee that stuff. So I didn't want to. And you know, and there was also many years ago. There, remember, there was some YouTube video: two girls, one cup. <laughs> yeah. um, it was totally. I think it was totally gross. Yes. And I never wanted to see it because you can't unsee that stuff. So I, I never wanted had an interest in seeing Airplane Two. We, we. Uh, Paramount offered it to us mm. to do it. And our idea was to do, you know, Bob Hayes and Julie Haggerty fly down the plane and he takes her home to meet his family. And it's the Godfather. Wow. You know, Amazing. Amazing. He's being Michael Corleone and he's sucked into this mob. And, <laughs> and, Param and, and we pitched it to Eisner and Katzenberg who were the head of, uh, of Paramount at the time. They loved it. And mm. so they went to Francis and he said no, because he wanted wow. to do godfather three so yeah. i mean in hindsight they absolutely <laughs> uh, airplane two with us but you know we we never blamed uh eisner and katzenberg eisner and katzenberg were nothing but good to us yeah you know they it was a miracle that airplane got made it was a miracle that it got made at paramount which was the best studio because of people like uh frank mancuso uh michael eisner and jeff katzenberg Excellent, excellent. Well, um, well, I want to thank you for not doing a tubin on this Zoom call. That's for sure. <laughs> I do appreciate. I'll, I'm gonna. I, I'll make sure this thing is blocked, and and I know how to press the button, the right buttons on this thing. God, She's like no, this thing. I mean, I, I I am old, but at least I know how to work the buttons. I mean, you, can, you I know how to press leave. It's there's a big red thing saying leave. Oh, oh, God. I tell you what you do want to do. Do yourself a favor and watch his on-air apology because that is, that's a thing of beauty. Who, who yeah. fronts up and admits all that? Oh, hilarious. But, yeah, um, but I also, I don't like, I don't like seeing people humiliated. You know, when our family used to watch American Idol and so, and they know I didn't, I didn't like to watch when somebody like missed, forgot the, the words or went yeah. off key. I, I don't like that. Or ice can't watch ice skating competitions <laughs> because I'm afraid of the fall. I can't. Yeah. Anyways, it's like picking the low hanging fruit for sure. But I look, I can't think of a better way for us to celebrate parody films and comedy spoofs than by talking with one of the founding fathers himself. So thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Sure. My pleasure.